So by the time we finish today, I hope that I've convinced you that you are all jazz musicians. And here's the connection. The most common form of jazz in human experience is ordinary conversation. So every time you open your mouth to have a conversation, you're playing jazz. There's structure, there's vocabulary and grammar. Helps you to communicate and connect with each other. But every time you use that, you use it differently. You improvise, you innovate, you're creative. Even if you're talking to the same person about the same subject two minutes later, that conversation will be different. Right? Your tone of voice will be different, your choice of words will be different, and what comes out of that conversation may in fact be very different. Because it's in those conversations that we leave room or space for innovation, for creativity, for new ideas that emerge. So every one of you is a jazz musician every time you open your mouth and have conversation. And so what we're interested in is how do you sustain that sense of being a jazz musician, one conversation after another, in order to create the results that you want. And in order to find out the kind of results that you want, we want to go through an exercise. So the trio is going to play for three, four, five minutes. We'll see how the conversation goes. And I want you to huddle in twos and threes or fours, fives, whatever's comfortable to you. And here's the question that I'd like you to answer. What qualities of great leadership do you see in the performance of the jazz group? What qualities of great leadership do you see in the performance of the jazz group? And when this is finished, we'll, we'll get some of your ideas uh, on the table. And that's the wisdom in the room that we'll continue to build on. at all of you playing and all the qualities that we've talked about, you remind me of a leader who leads from behind. You know, as a leader, and to your point about how you do it in an organization, is to think, am I having a conversation where I'm blending or interrupting? And I think a lot of times, like if someone was interrupting in jazz, you would know it, right? Because it just didn't feel right. The way we do our research is to listen to and collect the wisdom in the room, the kinds of responses that people make when we ask them the qualities of great teamwork or the qualities of great leadership they see in the performance of the jazz group. And out of all of that data, we found that there are five essential conversations for leading great teams, for great leaders leading great teams, for leaders who understand how to convene conversations that generate flourishing communities. And we've created an acronym for SMART, our own acronym for SMART. So the five conversations are soulful conversations, um, mindful conversations, astute conversations, responsible conversations, and trusting conversations. So the soulful conversations are the conversations that you have with yourself. It's the positive conversations, the negative conversations. You're always having a conversation with yourself about who you, at some point, somewhere inside, think you are. And the critical piece is it positive or negative, because depending on the quality of that conversation, or whatever the quality of that conversation is, you're going to take it into your relationship. You're going to take it into the space you're in. If it's negative, it's going to show up negative. If it's positive, it's going to show up positive. And so one of the things that we encourage people is to figure out how to make those conversations more positive than negative. The negative will always be there. You're just hardwired to do that. The question is how quickly you can identify it and consciously choose to shift over to a more positive focus for those, self -con those, those conversations with yourself. The mindful conversations are the conversations that we have with others in order to build positive alliances, productive collaboration. What kind of conversation, what tone of voice will invite people into an alliance, into a collaboration, into a partnership with you? And once you've, you've created a positive conversation with yourself, 
you've developed those positive alliances, then you use them to be astute, to analyze and to decide, to bring everybody's wisdom to bear on a particular possibility or a particular problem and develop some, some options to try, some possibilities to experiment with. The responsible conversations then assign accountability but also provide support. Most organizations are really good in assigning accountability. Here's the list of your duties. But they're really poor in providing support for you in doing those duties, learning how to do them better, stepping into new levels of responsibility. So it's both accountability and support that's crucial. The trusting conversation then is deciding and having conversations on an ongoing basis about what you're going to monitor and measure to ensure continuous improvement, you know, to ensure continuous service to the purpose that you, you have as your core chart. In a lot of ways, vision, mission, purpose in an organization is the core or the core chart in jazz. Um, and the clearer you are about that, then the more collaboration you will build around it and the more positive and, and reasonable movement forward you will make towards realizing that vision at, at higher and higher levels. So soulful, mindful, astute, responsible, and trusting. Those are the five essential conversations for great leadership that generates great teamwork.